This conference will now be recorded. Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to Isha Training Solutions. We'll wait for two more minutes for other learners to join and then we'll start our discussion. Two minutes we'll wait and then we'll start our discussion, guys. Thanks for joining. We'll wait for two more minutes and then we'll start our discussion. Thank you. Once again, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to Isha Training Solutions. Hope my voice is audible for everyone. My screen is also visible for everyone. So myself, uh, Saravanan Srinivasan. So I have uh, 15 plus years of experience in this uh, uh, performance testing and performance engineering <coughs> training side. So so I, I know various tools with respect to performance testing and performance engineering as well. So with that a brief introduction about me, uh, we'll quickly go into the uh, the course content detail, what we are going to learn as part of this course journey. So I encourage each and every one of you, uh, please, please stop me at any point of time. If you feel something has to be explained uh, uh, additionally or, or you need a little more uh, clarity on uh, <coughs> yeah, certain topics, uh, please feel free to stop me at any point of time. Ask your questions. We will discuss, get the uh, knowledge, and then we'll move on. Because we all are gathered here. That too, on a on a weekend day, we we all are available here. So we know uh, how much of hunger that we are having with respect to uh, learning. Yes, we wanted to fulfill that uh, uh, expectation. So anything that you feel like, uh, I mean, I'm talking little uh, high level language or or which is something need more. Uh, ground level information please stop me at any point of time uh, we will discuss and then we'll move on so now i'll quickly uh, uh, show you the course content what we are going to cover as part of this uh, uh, performance engineering uh, learning yes yes we we all know the importance of performance engineering because no nowhere uh, you can say nowadays like i only do performance testing no, uh, it, it is not the expectation nowadays. Uh, you need to do little more than uh, uh, performance testers they are doing, right? So, so that's where the concept of performance engineering or the the learning, okay, the learning is very very uh, important. So that's what we are going to uh, cover in this course journey. Uh, so, uh, so if you feel like um, you need, uh, uh, I mean, explanation on additional topic or what is your expectation of joining this uh, 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 course content. All those things we are going to discuss one by one. Okay, so first, performance engineering introduction. Performance engineering introduction. So anything that we are uh, talking, okay, uh, we should know the foundation level understanding uh, right from the scratch. Anything that we are learning, we need to start from the scratch. So that is the reason we are going to learn about introduction to performance engineering. Because right now that understanding itself is missing. Okay, many, if I ask this question, uh, uh, performance engineering means what? Performance testing means what? 
or other uh, engineering aspects anything that i am asking maybe uh, uh, very few people they will ask or will very few people they have the uh, understanding basically that is the reason we are going to set the context in the introduction part basically performance engineering means what performance testing means what why we are actually uh, doing this performance engineering what performance testers right now they are doing what they have to do additionally all those things we are going to discuss in this introduction part in that introduction part only we are going to learn about the life cycle okay see see any activity that you are doing there is life cycle okay so development when you are doing software development life cycle which is sdlc they call that as sdlc when the development is actually completed you will do testing right software testing you will do so that is actually called as software testing life cycle which is actually stlc okay similarly performance testers when they are doing the activity that is actually called as ptlc which is performance testing life cycle yes performance engineers also they have to do certain level of activity under each uh, layer so so performance engineering life cycle performance engineering life cycle which is pelc okay pelc okay so that is what we are going to learn in the performance engineering life cycle and one more thing because right now we are going to learn about performance engineering already we are doing certain existing activity so what are all the activities performed by the performance engineer if you know the list only you can categorize or understand what you are required to learn additionally what you are required to learn additionally or where you can contribute more where you can contribute more so that's where we are going to learn in this activities performed by the performance engineer because that categorization is important where you are right now what you have to learn where you have to contribute all those things you should know the clarity even even right from uh, uh, fundamental uh, learning that you wanted to do also first you have to know where you are then you can move forward right so that is what we are going to discuss in the activities performed by the performance engineers activities performed by the performance engineers that is what we are going to learn in the introduction part which is very important because that's where the basic understanding and basic analysis of what we are who we are where we are that understanding is also you are going to get it maybe right now you are doing certain testing activities what else you can do so that you can contribute in the engineering part of the uh, application so that is what we are going to learn in this particular section in this particular section we are going to learn about that concept any question guys okay yes sir yes swayam hello uh, yes sir sir any programming knowledge is required for this uh, yeah that's a good question see that's what performance engineering is having multiple contributions why am okay yes you are going to contribute in infrastructure level yes you are going to contribute in application level yes you are going to contribute in ui level so there are different different contributions that are there in that one such activity only you are coding knowledge okay be it like you can you can propose some recommendations in the application side you can propose some recommendations in the ui side you can propose certain recommendations in the infrastructure side those are something where you are not comfortable means those places you can recommend or you can provide your knowledge uh, to to those people or else if you know how to do it say like you know uh, the capacity planning or if you know uh, code knowledge or if you know ui ui coding all those things if you are knowing that you can contribute or else you can recommend it or you can find your uh, findings and observations also so that is where the journey is actually going to happen so i am so if i if you are asking me yes where you are right now example example i'm saying you are a performance tester and right now you have so and so activity you have so and so learning that you wanted to learn additional things like java you wanted to learn or uh, or or some a javascript you wanted to learn css you wanted to learn like that you can over the journey you can learn and contribute it doesn't mean that the day one you have to learn everything and then only you can contribute no right now what you are i mean where you are uh, contributing what additionally that you can contribute it you can still contribute it with with the knowledge of infrastructure with the knowledge of front end with the knowledge of application side 
uh, with the knowledge of your database side you can still contribute okay if you have the knowledge of doing the coding it is a next layer of contribution still you can contribute it by by doing the optimization and all why i am telling this because none of the uh, none of the organization they will straight away allow you to take the source code and do the fine tuning and all nobody will do that even the existing developer will not do that so so in that in that situation no other go you need to only provide recommendations that's all okay rest of the things will be handled by the developers okay the, the existing developers or if you are working in a very small uh, if you are working in a very small cmm level company maybe in those organization they will allow you to contribute in the coding level and all so answer to your question it is not a first level of thing to contribute it is a journey over the period if you really wanted to expand your knowledge or expand your contribution you can still still learn that and then uh, do the contribution or else you can still do where you are right now and what uh, things that are coming under your boundary you can contribute it's fine did i answer your question fine yes sir thank you it is like yeah. it is not mandatory right it is not a mandatory that's what i'm trying to say yeah correct okay. hope my voice is audible for everyone right my voice is audible for everyone yes so ranjani i think uh, you can you can rejoin one more time sometimes it may be a technical glitch uh, you can rejoin and uh, uh, you will hear it properly okay 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 sir i'll rejoin thank you yeah, yeah. sure thank you <clears throat> yeah so that is what we are going to do it in the first topic guys which is very important so we, actually we should not miss it it is very very um, um, important to uh, discuss these things straight away then only you will know your boundaries or you know your uh, uh, knowledge where you are and what you have to learn uh, those things and then straight away we are going see see how i designed this course content is that you need to contribute in the application side you need to contribute in the database side you need to contribute in the client side you need to contribute in the apm side profiling side like that only i created this course content so obviously we will touch every aspect of your application so that you have a wide range of knowledge across the place so in that case yes java performance engineering is the next concept we are going to learn java performance engineering is the next concept we are going to learn in that the first topic is actually jvm architecture java virtual machine architecture yes yes we know java any java program or software that you are running it will run in the jvm so first of all you should know what is jvm inside jvm what are all the things are there inside jvm what are all the activities are performed what you have to do in to avoid certain jvm related problem so all those things if you wanted to get the understanding the first and foremost thing what you have to do you need to learn about the jvm architecture jvm architecture so that is what we are going to learn in this topic so basically we are going to learn about class loader subsystem means what method area means we uh, method area means what heap area means what stack area means what all those things we are going to discuss so once you are learning about the architecture the next important thing is your jvm monitoring jvm monitoring that is very very important very very important you need to learn about jvm monitoring because inside jvm what is actually happening what you have to control if there is any error what you have to modify all those things if you wanted to understand it jvm monitoring is important so that jvm monitoring we are going to learn through two different ways two different ways one is a open source option another one is a commercial option one is open source option another one is a commercial option that we are going to learn so in the open source option what we are going to do i am going to explain about two utility tools i am going to explain about two utility tools inside your jdk folder there are two utility tools that are there one is j visual vm another one is j console j visual vm another one is j console 
So I am going to explain about J Visual VM. What are all the capabilities are there? You can monitor heap. I mean memory, garbage collection, CPU, thread. All those things how we are going to monitor using the J Visual VM. We are going to discuss. We are going to discuss about uh, J Visual VM and J Console through which how we are going to do the JVM monitoring. JVM monitoring. So this is the open source option. There is a commercial option also which is there. The tool is actually named as Your Kit Java Profiler. Y J P. Y J P. Your Kit Java Profiler, which is a commercial tool. There is a learning. um uh, evaluation model is also available so we are going to learn that as well okay we are going to learn that as well so uh, uh, your kit java profiler we are going to learn okay so through that tool also heap on heap level non heap level thread level garbage collection level all the things we are going to learn don't worry maybe these terms would be little new for you guys but but during our regular session i'll explain what is heap what is non heap what is thread what is garbage collection all the things we will discuss in a detailed way in a detailed way we will discuss it okay so next one is this is also very important you should know about garbage collection process in java in java how the garbage collection is actually happening maybe during the interview or or any discussion forum people will ask this question how garbage collection is actually working in uh, how garbage collection working in uh, uh, java means you should explain the process right so we are going to uh, discuss about young generation means what old generation means what perm generation means what inside young generation eden means what survivor means what all are we are going to discuss and even minor garbage collection major garbage collection full garbage collection that also we are going to discuss okay so that 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 knowledge is very important and that too when you are running any java program or software the the uh, heap memory is actually important heap memory okay how you are going to control uh, uh, heap memory okay how you are going to control heap memory so i uh, i i know definitely in this forum some performance testers uh, uh, using jmeter tool any any jmeter performance testing performance testers are there in this forum Yes, sir. Okay. So, if you wanted to do a large volume performance testing, if you wanted to do a large volume performance testing, what do you do? Basically, what you will do? Uh, I increase the heap size generally. On the day yeah, meter. Very. Good. So, uh, Loganath, you are about to say something. Are you are saying you are a performance tester using JMeter? Loganath. Okay, not a problem. So, so the the actual answer you provided, uh, Sudita. Yeah, you have to modify the uh, Loganath. Yeah, hello, Lawrence. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a performance test uh, by using JMeter only. Okay, okay, yeah, good. So why I ask that question because in in JMeter, if you wanted to do a large volume performance testing, basically you guys uh, will will alter the heap memory. Okay, will alter the heap memory. What you will do? You will go to a JMeter folder. Okay, example, this is a JMeter folder. Inside the bin folder, there is a file name called what file name guys jmeter windows batch file in that you will open it there you can see xms and then xmx value xmx and xmx min value and max value min value and max value by default it is actually having 1 gb 
by default it is actually having 1 GB but you can increase that heap memory to a little larger size in order to do a large volume performance setting large volume performance setting you can do it by changing this value this is just an example but any java program or software that you are uh, running in the startup file you can uh, you can uh, increase the size of your min size and max size so that learning also we are going to discuss and then there are different types of garbage collectors are there different type of garbage collectors are there there are four types serial garbage collector parallel garbage collector concurrent mark and sweep and g1 gc okay serial parallel concurrent mark and sweep and g1 gc okay serial parallel concurrent mark and sweep and g1 gc okay so in that i mean uh, the, the latest or everybody is actually using g1 nowadays but but we will discuss about each and everything even if you open the jmeter uh, uh, startup file also in that also you can see jmeter is using what what garbage collection g1 gc okay i mean i mean just for example i'm saying so so G, jmeter is also using g1 gc but we'll discuss discuss about each garbage collection types why we are using that type what is the use case all the things we will discuss in this different types of garbage collector topic and then thread pooling concepts okay core pool size max pool size or bounded queue unbounded queue all those things we are going to discuss in the thread pooling concept similarly in jdbc connection pooling concept also we are going to discuss and then a major major learning is thread dump analysis how to do the thread dump analysis so basically thread dump means what we will discuss thread life cycle means what we will discuss what are all the ways in which you can capture the thread dump we will discuss and then how to analyze the thread dump we will discuss all the things we will discuss in this topic so thread dump means what life cycle of the threads we will discuss and different tools how to capture and how to analyze it very very important very very important topic thread dump analysis okay so thread dump means what during a problematic situation what situation during a problematic situation your application is actually hanging crashing spinning frozen some issue is actually happening in your application that moment of time what you are going to do you are going to capture the thread dump thread dump means what taking the snapshot taking the thread snapshot during the problematic situation okay taking the thread snapshot during the problematic situation that is actually the thread dumps and so how to take the thread dump and how to analyze the thread dumps all those things we are going to discuss <coughs> similarly similarly heap dump analysis i mean what is heap dump what are all the tools available how to capture the um, heap dump and uh, uh, what are all the different ways in which you are going to uh, uh, trigger the heap dump all the things we are going to discuss okay like like thread dump yeah. heap dump all sorry sorry to sir interrupt uh, just asking just one uh, i question i have a sir uh, for the uh, yeah, thread dump or heap dump analysis should i use uh, another tool or observation tool like like new relic or dynamics from there we should check from the analysis yeah yeah so so for for thread dump we will use uh, even j visual vm is one of the tool okay through that also you can do that and there is a website available called fastthread.io through that also you can do that so those are the things we are going to discuss uh, sudipta okay okay thank you thank you yeah sure so jaypal i think uh, your question is also same thing so we are going to use uh, different utility tools to learn the thread dump okay yeah welcome so heap dump thread dump and third one is also very very important which is garbage collection analysis so how will you collect it okay what argument you will add it or how to analyze your garbage collection log how to analyze your garbage collection log so that also we are going to learn okay and then a uh, uh, conceptual understanding i mean memory leak means what out of memory means what okay how will you do basic analysis of memory uh, memory uh, leak or or out of memory error that also we are going to discuss so all these things we wanted to show something on the java side okay next we are going to touch the important layer right now many people are they are not doing 
so we wanted to cover it badly because because that is also important layer but nobody is actually touching that layer uh, in most of the organization or most of the performance sensors they are not at all touching this layer so that is the reason we are going to cover this infrastructure layer also in that two flavor uh, windows flavor and then the linux flavor both the flavors we are going to cover it in in uh, uh, windows infrastructure monitoring we are going to learn about perfmon and there are critical metrics or or concepts we are going to learn how to analyze the issues and all we are going to learn and similarly linux server yes in linux server there are different different commands that are there vm stat net stat io stat top sar and there is one more utility tool we are going to learn which is nmon so in that each of the utility tool how we are going to run it what are all the metric you are going to gather it and how you are going to analyze it all the things we are going to discuss in that nmon is actually a um, i mean useful or or uh, uh, latest utility tool everybody is actually using Yes, VM Stat is also one everybody is using, but Nmon is also an important one. Okay, so so infrastructure monitoring also we are going to cover it. Okay, first introduction, and then Java learning, and third one we are going to do a infrastructure monitoring. Okay, after touching the infrastructure straight away, what we are going to do? We are going to learn about database level monitoring. Database. So in that we are taking the Oracle database as our learning. Okay. Oracle database monitoring in Oracle DB there is an important topic available called AWR reports AWR automatic workload repository report so AWR report is actually a very 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 detailed report yes we are going to see the critical portions in AWR report what are all the critical portions you have to focus on because because everybody knows it uh, uh, AWR report if you are a 12 year 13 year experienced DBA person also you cannot extract the complete report straight away so we are going to cover the important uh, concepts or the portions in which you are going to analyze it and you are going to say that there is a problem in your oracle db so there are two reports actually actually saying there are three reports awr reports addm report and ash reports there are three reports are there but in that awr and ash kind of a similar report so that's the reason we are going to cover awr report and addm report awr report and addm report we are going to cover it okay so so we are going to cover the database level monitoring and the next layer is actually a client side layer a front end layer also we are going to cover because your performance testing tools Say, say now also many many performance testers you guys mentioned uh, uh, you are using J meter, right? So so obviously your performance testing tool is not covering the presentation layer or the client side layer. It is not covering J meter is not at all covering J meter is actually covering what layer? It is actually covering the HTTP layer, which is a transport layer communication only. It is actually doing right your HTTP communication only. It is actually doing. okay so which means that your client side number your browser number is actually it is not coming in the performance testing tool your 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 client side number or the browser number which is not at all coming in the performance testing tool so in that case in that okay in that case so so learning this concepts also very very important so what we are going to do we are going to learn about a uh, front end metrics means what what are all the common problems how your browser rendering is actually working and three different tool in which we are going to learn the client side monitoring concept we are going to learn the client side monitoring concept okay so so chrome dev tools yes everybody knows it and there is a tool called gt metrics and there is a tool called web page test so these three tools how we are using to do the client side monitoring we are going to learn one by one by one i'll take a pass here guys any question till now okay so now yes we covered the layers client side layer database layer infrastructure layer application layer like that we covered every layer because see this is our journey that we are beginning so obviously i wanted to touch every layer you should have uh, understanding on each and every layer so that is how the course content is actually prepared and i i wanted to touch the other aspects also so so there is a profiling tools i mean when developers they are doing the development activity they will do unit testing and all right so that time they'll use the profiling tools profilers 
so we wanted to already i i explained about one tool called your kit java profiler in the top in the top when we are discussing about jvm monitoring a commercial solution i told you right your kit java profiler similarly we are going to learn one more commercial tool which is actually a j profiler which is helpful to understand a problem in the code level hot spots hot spot in the code level so so that tool also we are going to learn in a detailed way and then guys a very 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 important topic because in isha training solutions we are actually providing a separate training topic for uh, the apm tools but we wanted to add that concept inside the performance engineering content so that is the reason we added this dynatrace content in this course journey so we are going to learn about the apm tools capabilities and features which is very important nowadays uh, i mean the 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 trend is actually moving towards apm tools i mean not only apm tools nowadays everybody is talking about observability observability so uh, observability platform implementation even dynatrace they are claiming that they have the observability platform so 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 the the trend is actually moving towards observability so that is the reason we are going to learn the tool as well so we are going to learn the apm tool which is dynatrace apm tool we are going to learn guys and finally what are all the problems that you will encounter in the real time right so so probably uh, production load analysis you wanted to do it means how we are going to analyze it or or common problems that are happening in the production cpu related problem memory related problem response time related problem what are all the problem that you will get it in the real time right so that also we are going to learn guys okay that also we are going to learn so basically if you if you summarize the entire course content guys like we are touching every layer we are covering every uh, uh, layer monitoring and it's a journey so we are starting the journey from each and every layer so so after completion of this course content definitely you will have a understanding in every layer to provide findings and recommendations across the layer guys harish you have any question harish uh yes sir so i want to talk about the app. Uh, apm tool so are you going to talk about app dynamic means other, any other tool other than the dynasty no see actually what happened one time we we put app dynamics the learners requested us to change the dynatrace now we put uh, dynatrace and you are asking app dynamics so that's how it can cover changes. both yes. means because i never uh, means uh, use dynatrace uh, i'm currently using app dynamic and uh, i don't think next for next two years i will be uh, i will get chance to work on dynatrace see actually so uh, can uh, we cover both uh, the tools uh, high level also will be fine for the app uh, dynamic is it, is it fine that i can cover one hour of is it fine that i can cover one hour of app dynamic fine for you ah uh, okay so whoever uh, uh, others uh, those those are using so it will be beneficial for the yeah, yeah, not a problem well. not a problem see see I, we always uh, uh, take uh, the learners points as well i mean so that's the reason i told you that's how the the switch happened from app dynamics to dynatrace so so uh, okay i'll i'll give you a, a high level understanding about app dynamics also not a problem okay okay yeah thank sure you. thank you so those who wanted to enroll for this course journey guys uh, please reach out to kumar sir This is Kumar sir number eight zero one double nine five two four two seven eight zero one double nine five two four two seven. I'll copy paste this number in the chat. You guys can take it. Okay. Anything that you wanted to discuss about course timing, course content, fees related, anything that you wanted to discuss, you can discuss with him. Just a minute. We got a question. Can you explain what is JVM heap thread garbage collection? Uh, actually, okay. I'm Sorry muted. to yeah, interrupt. Yeah. Uh, uh one more question that i uh, don't see here that uh, that meta space uh, included so can you please cover that topic also meta space is actually there here itself right in this topic it's a little come okay so here it's a little come tenure uh, we we put like eden space survey space tenured space right the next space is actually uh, meta space only so we'll we'll discuss that in the in the actual uh, discussion okay yeah so can you explain what? see uh, lognath actually that is what uh, uh, jvm is a java virtual machine any java program that you are running it will run in jvm only 
okay heap is nothing but the memory okay the memory is actually defined into two heap memory and non heap memory so object creations and all happening in your heap memory only thread is nothing but the task whenever you wanted to perform any task internally it is actually managed by threads okay and then garbage collection so if you have unwanted memory that are there in unreferenced memory that are there in your heap memory your garbage collection uh, uh, unwanted memory that are there in your memory uh, uh, structure garbage collection will clear that uh, uh, un un unreferenced memory okay so that is actually garbage collection maybe i i provided a very high, very high level uh, definition but during our discussion i will provide in a little more detail as well logan okay okay thank you thank you very much uh jaypal uh, wireshark is not part of this course content uh, jaypal okay i mean uh, see nowadays uh, we we earlier had a workshop and all for wireshark but but in this content uh, because wireshark is now people are more towards network uh, network people only they are using right so so that's the reason uh, we did not have that so everything we will discuss uh, navin uh, that navina so we, uh, whatever the tools things that we are discussing right i'll explain everything how to set up uh, how to do the hands on practice and everything we will discuss in our regular session that that is there okay um so just one question so okay. what are the various architectures uh, you cover so is it uh, will you be covering different architectures and the uh, performance engineering focus for each or any yeah. one of it see uh, as such we are not mentioning the word as uh, 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 architecture okay but if you want i'll uh, take that uh, uh, topic also okay i'll i'll uh, see nowadays everybody is talking about microservices so but even then uh, if you wish i'll i'll take uh, a high level understanding about what are all the different architecture types that are there okay okay yeah because i know yeah, uh, microservices uh, distributed architectures and you know, there are different terminologies right so yeah yeah, yeah. Approach, that's what we just want to know like uh, what level of engineering you know, will be applied for each type of architecture see, see this, this irrespective of, yeah yeah definitely irrespective of the uh, architectural uh, types also this this suits well uh, that we will discuss maybe uh, i'll explain the types and then you will understand uh, clear okay okay and uh, yeah. what is the course duration 25 plus hours of session 25 plus hours of session we are going to cover it and uh, say 25 plus hours but but we are going to have it in the weekend uh, days right so one and a half hour saturday and one and a half hour sunday okay one and a half hour saturday and one and a half hour sunday uh, uh this time i mean 7:30 pm to 9 pm ist uh, corresponding timelines are there in the website also you can go through that okay 7:30 pm to uh, uh, 9 pm okay so maybe during uh, uh, the demo times we'll have a little uh, shorter session but other times we'll have 1 hour to 1 and a half hour session we will cover it okay okay so that's what i'm about to say that maybe you you brought in the uh, uh, question so yes uh, anything that you wanted to discuss you can discuss with kumar sir course fees course content anything that you wanted to discuss 8019524427 is number you can reach out to kumar sir for any further information this is actually a weekend session saturday sunday alone sessions weekday holiday okay so weekend session uh, saturday one and a half hours and sunday one and a half hours we are planning to cover the session so 25 plus hours of session we are going to cover and all these sessions are actually recorded all these sessions are actually recorded if you are unable to attend the session you are missing certain sessions also not a problem these videos you are going to have it for lifetime access this video you are going to have it for lifetime access any number of times you can watch it you can bring your question in the next session even we'll discuss in a detailed way so that is the understanding and any software documents and everything we are going to share it through google drive through the google drive we are going to share it so that we can set up everything in our each of our machines and then we can do the hands on uh, learning and all these videos we are going to share it in the youtube playlist url in youtube playlist url we will we will upload the videos and all these videos you are going to have it for a lifetime access okay so today maybe we 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 uh, discussed about the course content tomorrow 
we are going to start our actual learning day one topic we are going to start from tomorrow introduction of performance engineering we are going to start from tomorrow guys so don't miss anything if you wanted to have a continuous learning with with all the knowledge and experience that you wanted to gather means please uh, do not uh, miss up, miss these sessions so so those who wanted to enroll for this course journey please reach out to kumar sir 80199 Five two four two seven is uh, number. You can reach out to Kumar sir for any further information, guys. Clear, guys? Yeah. Uh, so one one more question. So during the course, are you um, is it going to show us the real time example means how the uh, like uh, heap utilization everything, works? Uh, everything is actually with the practical. real example. Yes, yes, sir. That is what okay. we are going to do. Okay. We are going to use the tool. I, I am going to. I'll, I'll explain first. Okay. Probably in the introduction uh, session. After the introduction session, I'll explain how to set up the sample application, so that you are going to set up that sample application. And each tool when you are uh, when you are using, how you are going to leverage this sample application to learn all the concepts. That is how the entire learning would be, Arish. Okay. 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 So those who wanted to enroll for this course journey, please reach out to Kumar sir, guys. Eight zero one double nine five two four two seven is number. Uh, thanks for the learners who joined today. The two on a weekend day, you guys are showing your interest to learn things. So that shows your hunger for learning. So thanks for jo- joining and thanks for giving me this opportunity for sharing my knowledge and experience with you people. Yes, we are going to continue the same. for the entire course journey uh, we all will travel in this course journey for for learning this performance engineering concept thanks for joining and have a nice day bye bye